welcome to another episode of Eat, Play and Stay, your easy watch travel guide to some of the best places to eat, play and stay from right across Australia. We're here at the Meat and Wine Co at South Bank in Melbourne's CBD. And this week on the program, we'll be taking a tropical trip to far north Queensland and having a taste testing extravaganza at some amazing wineries in South Australia. But first up, we've booked a table at a beachside cafe in St Kilda where the food is fresh, the scenery is spellbinding, and the fun-loving party atmosphere carries on long into the night. Now, what does any wise Melbourneian do when the sun does finally come out? Well, they head for St Kilda and the amazing Beachcomber Cafe. Sun, sand, surf, and some of the best seafood in the country, not to mention the very best ice cream. Let's go check it out. Yum. Situated just six kilometres from Melbourne's CBD and a few sandy steps away from the stunning beauty of St Kilda Beach, the Beachcomber Cafe is a great place to go if you're after a quintessential beachside dining experience. Whether you're sitting outside soaking up some sunshine or dining indoors, the fun-loving atmosphere, attentive staff and mouth-watering meals will keep you coming back time after time. All this combined with the Beachcomber's spellbinding charm makes it the perfect place to host your next corporate function or private celebration. Now Beachcomber Cafe prides itself on serving up an amazing array of modern Australian cuisine and that is exactly what we have here today. Now not only do you get the sensational seafood, you also get prime cuts of steak and a range of Mediterranean favourites. Today, for starters, we're trying the crumbed sardines served on a rocket salad. We've also got the char-grilled baby octopus served with feta and olives, and an amazing anti-pasto platter with grilled eggplant, marinated mixed olives, char-grilled artichokes, and a whole lot more. For main course, why not try the 450 gram T-bone steak, char-grilled and cooked the way you like it, served with chips and salad. Or the main attraction, the seafood platter, consisting of king prawns, blue swimmer crab, oysters, scallops, a half crayfish mornay, grilled fish, baby octopus, grilled prawn cutlets, and more. If pizza's more your thing, try something from the special breads menu, including Spiro's special pizza. For pastas and risottos, I can't go past the porcini risotto with porcini mushrooms, thyme and creamy white wine sauce. And finally, something to munch on, an Australian cheese plate served with toasted fruit loaf and fresh fruit. Now, the dress code here at St Kilda Beach can be rather informal as we've seen, so if you want something nice and casual, drop in here to the juice bar and takeaway, grab your fish and chips and head straight back to the beach. So for a slice of seaside splendour, head to the Beachcomber Cafe in St Kilda, open for breakfast, lunch and dinner, seven days a week. In the heart of Melbourne's central business district, you'll find Causeway 353 Hotel. Whether you're planning a weekend of shopping and entertainment, or you're here for a business trip, you don't need to look any further for accommodation. Here you have easy access to Melbourne's famous laneway culture. Causeway 353 Hotel is set amongst leading fashion and accessory boutiques, cafes and restaurants. It's just minutes away from the MCG, the Docklands and theatre precincts. Inside Causeway 353 Hotel, you'll find contemporary accommodation containing 142 rooms with 24-hour reception. All rooms have king-size beds with a choice of different types of room layouts. All rooms include a mini bar, coffee and tea making facilities, satellite TV, wireless broadband internet, your own private safe and individual climate control in every room. If you're keen to maintain your fitness routine whilst you're away from home, Causeway 353 Hotel also has this state-of-the-art gymnasium and steam room. There's also a business centre where you can catch up on those never-ending emails. Soto Restaurant is open seven days a week for breakfast, lunch and dinner and has an array of modern international cuisine on offer. Just take a look at these mouth-watering meals. 
after a full day of shopping in one of Melbourne's leading fashion precincts, I'm going to kick back and relax in my spa suite here at Causeway 353 Hotel. Ah, there's something soulfully reassuring about being this close to the native organic origin of one of Australia's finest wines, and I'm here at the Cocker Estate in the heart of the Yarra Valley, kissing one of the finest Tempranillos I've ever tasted. Like a beautiful rose flower brooch pinned to the edge of the ubiquitous mountain range, Tokar Estate brings a little piece of Europe right into the core of the Yarra Valley and is the perfect place to immerse you, all of your senses. So, well, there's no knowing without understanding and uh, I'm here to understand what makes the Aria, which is based on the Templar Neo, so unique. Well, it's, it's something that doesn't exist um, in Victoria. We were the first to produce it. Um, 97 we were in California and I thought well they've got various magnificent wines and we've had our wines here but I thought something for the Yarra Valley uh, and as we've had Tempranillo uh, we came up with a formulation of the very best of Tempranillo, the very best of Cabernet and the very best of Shiraz and blended it so each wine is made individually and then put together and further aged in new oak and the result is what you have here at the Aria and we're extremely proud of that. Now it couples well with what kind of cuisine? Really is a, a, a biggish wine so it's, uh, it's more suited to the heavier cuisine. Uh, it obviously works extremely well with richer spicier food. By spice I don't mean heat but uh, the richness of the food so you've got our pork dish with his spiced cabbage, the seasonal um, turkey pie with its lovely cranberries and for instance the seafood which is our prawn and calamari um, char grilled on a base of tomato, fennel and onion uh, for which they steal a lot of my sambuca for I might add <laughs> and then of course you've got your regional platter of our homemade ingredients here so we feel the wine should be a, a companion rather than a dominating feature doesn't really need the hard sell with Mother Nature doing all the talking. If you're looking for a home style feel in a fine, fine winery restaurant, then come and immerse yourself at Tocker Estate. Cheers. Thanks, Leon. Cheers. Now, like all Melbourneites, I never miss the opportunity to pay a visit to the Yarra Valley. It's just an easy hour's drive from the CBD, always something special to discover. And today it's Mount Rail, a renowned restaurant and boutique accommodation. Spectacular views. I have the entire place to myself and I am going to enjoy it. <laughs> Mount Rail is the perfect place to base yourself to explore everything the region has to offer. Accommodation ranges from romantic spa suites with these breathtaking views to larger self-catering suites with kitchen facilities. A continental in-room breakfast hamper is included. So John, it's all about the views here at Mount Rail, so we thought we'd bring it outside. Fantastic. Tell me a little bit about this special spot where we're standing. Look, we have this um, amazing uh, platform here, which we hold lots of weddings, and, and obviously the couples exchange their vows here, and with a backdrop like this, why wouldn't you? I so, know, fantastic for your photos. Yeah, yeah. perfect wedding photos. Mm. So along with that, we have other private functions and product launches and corporate events as well. So, okay. Tell me a little bit about the restaurant. Uh, the restaurant sits at 100 people, um, once again it has this amazing view and um, we concentrate mainly on local regional produce. The menu is very much about um, people being able to share and sample all the dishes. And tell us a few of your signature dishes. Look, uh, at the moment we have a, a fantastic uh, local venison carpaccio which is served with the raspberry vinegar made from local raspberries, um, some local baby spatchcock with a pork, orange and thyme stuffing served with tzatziki, uh, a fantastic dessert at the moment is a shortbread with lemon cream and blackberries from Wandon. Oh, it sounds divine. Now, so we are open Thursday to Sunday yes. for lunch and dinner. Indeed. Yep, and then brunch um, Saturday and Sunday. Indeed we are. It yes. is very, very special. Thank it you. is Mount Rail here in the Yarra Valley. 
joining us now is Paul from the Meat and Wine Co, who's going to give us some recommendations from their wine list. Paul, over to you. Thanks. Well, first of all, you've got the Pegasus Bay Samyon Samyon. It's a really nice exotic fruit, uh, nice hibiscus flavours, easy drinking for the ladies. And then you've got the Aria, which is a bit of a blend. It's a Tempranillo Cabernet Shiraz. So it's got some nice tannins, nice silky, big fruit, really easy to drink. Fantastic, Paul, thank you. Nice. Now don't go anywhere because after the break, we're taking you to the picturesque Port Douglas to show you some getaway spots that might just get you in the mood to start planning your next tropical escape. Just like the heritage listed Daintree Rainforest and the spectacular Great Barrier Reef, Rendezvous Reef Resort Port Douglas is a far north Queensland destination in its own right. The Rendezvous Reef Resort Port Douglas is placed only a few minutes drive from the heart of the Port Douglas village and only a short stroll from the pristine waters of Four Mile Beach. The resort offers self-contained villa-style accommodation set among 15 acres of lushly landscaped tropical gardens. All villas are incredibly spacious with 110 square metres of living space spread across two storeys. A fully functional kitchen, well presented bathroom, large TV and DVD player, high speed internet, laundry facilities and air conditioning is standard across all accommodation options. Rendezvous Reef Resort Port Douglas provides an array of convenient leisure facilities including two immense lagoon inspired swimming pools. After a day spent exploring and immersing yourself in all the wonder that this seaside paradise has to offer, you'll have worked up an appetite. And the best place to enjoy a satiating meal is at the resort's in-house restaurant. Sitting resplendently by the poolside, the Swish restaurant serves up tasty modern Australian cuisine. Rendezvous Reef Resort Port Douglas is an impeccable place to eat, play and stay next time you're in picture-perfect Port Douglas. After a day spent on the beach or shopping at some boutique outlets or indulging in a little bit of pampering at a nearby day spa in Port Douglas, you'll need somewhere to refuel with some hearty meals. And what could be better than Sassy with Cucina? And joining us now is Di Sassy herself. Di, tell us a bit about the experience here at Sassy's Cucina. Well, we like to think that we have um, something to suit every taste, mood and budget. And while we're sitting here waiting for Tony to prepare some of his signature dishes, this is what we offer as a casual dish before going out or perhaps if you don't feel like committing to a major meal. So we have lovely um, Italian pizza. This one has um, the lovely San Daniele prosciutto. It's one of the highest grades of prosciutto in Italy. And as you can see, it's got a nice thin crisp crust. And then we have these other dishes, which we call spuntini. Sometimes they're referred to as stuzzachini or assagini. They all really mean little tastes or what Australians call now tapas. I was going to say, well, there's plenty there for people to enjoy, but of course, if they do want to move on to a main course, then your lovely husband, Tony Sassy, can whip them up a main course. He can indeed with some of his signature dishes. Lovely. Tony, tell us how your background from Abruzzo influences your menu. Well, I, I, you know, I was lucky to be born in, in, um, in Italy, and uh, which I still remember the, the flavours of, of uh, the region that I come from. And what have you prepared for us today? Chili mud crab, which is uh, it's a specialty of mine. It's a local mud crab, as you can see. Ribeye, that's a, a black anchors, which it comes from New South Wales and um, Queensland. This is a specialty also from the, from the region, linguine do tomato, uh, which is a mix of seafood. And this is my specialty that I've been doing this for 20 years, which is a salmon carpaccio. After a delicious meal, Sassy's Vino Bar is the perfect place to come for a relaxing drink and catch up with some friends. This wine must be for me. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, guys. Cheers. For accommodation that's a little bit special in Port Douglas, you have to book a stay at this place. With luxurious villa-style accommodation, personalised service and gorgeous natural scenery, Frangipani bed and breakfast will leave you with no doubt that you're in holiday maker heaven. The Frangipani bed and breakfast can be reached via a 60 minute drive along the Captain Cook Highway from Cairns International Airport. And it's situated just moments away from the sandy shores of Port Douglas's famous Four Mile Beach. 
this lavish double-storey villa will ensconce you within your own private tropical paradise that you'll be loath to leave. Guests can take their pick from three beautifully presented bedrooms known as the blue, red and green rooms. Each features individualised interior colour schemes corresponding to its title. The three bedrooms are located upstairs and feature huge private balconies that overlook the villa gardens. All of the bedrooms have ensuite bathrooms, but for couples away on a romantic escape, the red room ensuite contains the added bonus of a spa bath. This place wouldn't be a B&B without brekkie, and the Frangipani serves up an appetising continental buffet breakfast every morning by the pool. Jump on one of the four complimentary bicycles or work off the jet lag with a game of table tennis. Whatever you plan to get up to during your Port Douglas holiday, the highlight of your trip might just be coming back home to the Frangipani bed and breakfast for some peace, quiet and pure relaxation. Time to check out some more great places to eat, play and stay. Book any type of room 45 days in advance at Kiss Bali Luxury Villas and receive a 15% discount. Book the deluxe suite or three bedroom villas for at least five nights and receive an in-villa barbecue and bottle of sparkling wine. Stay at Sentosa Private Villas and Spa for a world-class contemporary experience where each one of their 45 villas contain their very own private pool. Visit balisentosa.com for special offers and last-minute deals. Simply Organoleptic and Cafe Miso in McLaren Vale have typical British fare, British beers and quality boutique wines to try and buy. Check out their website for more details including Sunday's traditional roast and all-day brunch. God's Hill Wines are offering Eat, Play and Stay viewers a 20% discount off every bottle of 2007 Menzel Shiraz when you order a six pack. That's a saving of $120. Only 100 cases available, so act now. With panoramic views across Port Phillip Bay, Sales on the Bay is among Melbourne's most sought after restaurants for relaxed modern Australian fine dining and events. Visit their website for seasonal menus and offers. We've got wineries galore coming up right after the break, but in the meantime, feel free to jump online and follow Eat, Play and Stay on Facebook or subscribe to our podcasts on iTunes. It's the best way to keep up with our travel tips, venue reviews and recommendations. Located along one of the heartstrings of the Barossa Valley on Sepplesfield Road is Barossa Valley Estate. This estate played a pivotal role in maintaining the Barossa Valley's reputation as one of the most renowned wine regions in the world. In 1984, the government attempted to persuade Barossa Valley growers to abandon their traditional Shiraz vines and climb aboard the Chardonnay trend but a band of 80 third and fourth generation growers refused to be swayed, putting their faith in the vines and land that their families had cultivated. From this resistance, the Barossa Valley Estate was born. And so was this famous bottle of wine, the E&E &E Black Pepper Shiraz, isn't that right, Tom? That's right, Malia. Yeah, we're very proud of this one. We've been doing this since 1988. Comes off some of the oldest vines that we have uh, from our grower base, from the shareholders. and. Um, famous all over the world and as you've come in the middle of vintage we could go and find Mark and see what he's up to. That'd be wonderful, let's go. Now Mark, being the winemaker, your role in producing quality drops is just pivotal. What does your job actually entail? It entails uh, the picking of the grapes, determining when they need to be picked and then when they come into here determining what we need to do in the form of additions, how long the wine is to be pumped over for and then using the laboratory, determine when it's ready to go off into the next section being the barrels. Fantastic. At what point in the season do you sort of go, this is going to be a really good season? Oh, the best, best way to do that is to get out with the growers, walk around the vineyard, have a look, have a talk to the grower, look at the vines, and they'll tell you everything you need to know. So it really all starts in the vineyard? Oh, very much so. That's why we work so, so importantly with our growers. Uh, that is the key pivotal role of making great wine. So when you find yourself in South Australia's most renowned wine region, make sure you pay a visit to Barossa Valley Estate, the place that reignited the region's romance with red wine. 
Steeped in traditional charm and historical significance, Oxenberry Farm was the very first farm to be established in the McLaren Vale area in South Australia. And joining us now in their cellar door is Jared Scott, who is the manager of Oxenberry. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Tell us a bit more about the history of Oxenberry Farm. Sure. Um, where we are right now is, is the Oxenberry Farm site, which was William Colton's. Um, at the back of the site, uh, behind our winery here, we have uh, William Colton's house still, which was built in 1840, oldest house in the area. Um, I guess we started Oxenbury Farm Wines three and a half years ago. Mostly the whole idea of Oxenbury Farm is encouraging people to visit us here at Oxenbury Farm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you've selected some signature wines to talk to us about today. Do you want to run us through those? We have. Uh, what we've got here to start with is two of our most recent additions to the range. These are what we call grapple ciders. They're a mixture of uh, McLaren Vale wine grapes and Adelaide Hills apples. And we've got a, a white one and a red one. And tell us about your genuine signature wine that you have there. The first release was the 2008 and once we'd sort of finished it in the winery we found it was just a little bit lean and maybe the tannins were just a tiny bit too hard for the, for the weight of the wine. So one of the members of the winemaking team put some unwanted Chardonnay into it and we sort of thought it improved the wine quite, quite dramatically. So we ended up in with 14% Chardonnay in there and, and we stuck with that recipe for the first two vintages. Um, this, the 2011, um, has only got 5% Chardonnay. And I believe you've got a musket for us as well. So this wine, average age of the, the wine we used was 20 years old, so it's a 20 year old liqueur musket. One of the things we started doing here as of uh, December last year is uh, matching it to French cheese. You can choose to extend your stay at the on-site Peddler Cottage bed and breakfast. This fully restored 1940s cedar clad cottage has a kitchen, bathroom and laundry facilities. Sensational wine, filling fare and well-appointed accommodation. Oxenberry Farm has it all covered. So why not make a trip to McLaren Vale and come and check it out for yourself. The Olivers are one of the oldest and highly renowned wine dynasties in McLaren Vale. And with 170 years of experience and acclaimed success, it's little wonder why Olivers Taranga boasts some of the best drops in South Australia. In 1839, William and Elizabeth Oliver voyaged to South Australia from Scotland and eventually settled in McLaren Vale in 1841. The land has never changed hands and today, the fifth and sixth generations descendants of the Oliver family utilise modern technology to produce ultra-premium age-worthy wines without compromising the traditional values set by their ancestors. Joining us now is Don, who is the director and vigneron here. And you've selected three wines to talk to us about today. Tell us about the ones you've chosen. Um, we'll start with the white. The white we've chosen is a, is a Fiano, which is a new to Australia. That is Italian variety, and it's got lots of natural acid. The next one is a, a very old variety to Australia and old to the world, uh, a Grenache which uh, generally is used as a blender, but we've chosen to do it as a burrado and it shows exactly what the Grenache can do and it's a, it's a, a lunchtime-y kind of wine, slightly lighter than the normal reds, but it's uh, more for pasta and, and, and lighter kind of foods. And lastly is our reserve, which is our, is our real signature one and is our one that we hang our hat on most and it's one that we do the best, we think. Um, some of that fruit out of this particular patch goes into Grange some years and it's one for cellaring and, and, and we would like the punters to buy this one and put away for and drink in 10 or more years time. We've chosen some, some great wines to talk to us about but of course this isn't all that you have in the range. You've got about 10 more, is that right? Yes, we have quite a other range of others including some of the outside the square kind of ones including a Sagrantino just here that's an Italian variety new to Australia, Tempranillo relatively new, Spanish variety and I should, probably should mention the, the fortifieds. Well Don, if people want to find you they can of course jump onto your website and subscribe to the mailing list yes. and they can also shop online I believe. Shop online and, uh, and our website is, is a fantastic thing to look at. That's great, we'll take note. <laughs> Thank you Don. Cheers. Primo Estate in McLaren Vale in South Australia is family owned and operated. In 1979, Primo Grilli and his eldest son Joe founded Primo Estate. And winemaker Joe produced his very own vintage when he was just 20 years old. Joe, it's a privilege to have you here personally talking us through the Joseph Experience. Tell us a bit about the concept behind the Joseph Experience. It's just a wonderful way to show the Joseph wines, which are our top wines, uh, with some of the latest vintage of uh, Joseph Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Well, we usually start off with the uh, Joseph Pinot Grigio, 
It's uh, named after our daughter Eleanor. You know, planted in our Clarendon vineyard, which is part of McLaren Vale, but it's um, on a hill on some really rocky soil. And I think you can see that coming through in the wine. So right next to that Pinot Grigio patch, we planted some of the uh, Nebbiolo grape. So there's a theme here. This is going back to our Italian roots. It's a grape that makes the great Barolo and Barbaresco wines of the Piedmont in Northern Italy. But, you know, I love it because it's got, at the same time, some feminine, quite floral characteristics, but also some really masculine, rich, tannic qualities as well. So the next wine, uh, now changing gears a little, is the Angel Gully Shiraz. This is uh, a 100% single vineyard Shiraz from Cl Clarendon. Because it's in that dry grown rocky soil and a slightly cooler climate at 250 metres of altitude, you're, you're getting a little bit more elegance in the style than I think the average Shiraz gets from these parts. Cabernet Merlot Moda. Now this is our most well-known, you know, flagship red. It's Cabernet Merlot, but it's made using the Amarone technique of a Northern Italy, where we bring the grapes from the vineyard behind us here, and we actually dry them in the car park area of the cellar door and concentrate the fruit uh, for a couple of weeks before we crush it. Well, you've sold me, Joe. thank you. Make sure you come down and try the Joseph Experience at Primo Estate in McLaren Vale. Now here's your chance to win five nights accommodation for two adults in a one-bedroom apartment at Wyndham Surface Paradise Resort, including buffet breakfast daily. All you have to do is tell us in 25 words or less why you would like a holiday in Surface Paradise. To enter, visit eatplansday.com.au and enter your details. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Don't forget, if you'd like more information on any of the venues featured on tonight's program, then check out these great websites. It's bye from us here at the Meat and Wine Co. at Southbank. Don't forget to tune in next week as we explore the Hunter Valley and check out some rustic country Victoria retreats. I'll see you then.